Are you desperate for dating direction? Do you want to weed out the weird from the wonderful? Then stay tuned because this is the Hobbyist Guide to Dating. Run BT! Hello and welcome to the second instalment of the Hobbyist Guide to Dating. I'm Sharon Mason and I'm joined today by my good friend Fliss Williams who is currently single. I am single. I mean, look at me. Why? But do you know what I'm doing here? I am very bravely going to step up to the plate and put all of Sharon Mason's wonderful advice to the test. So you can see that it really does work. We'll see if she can get a boyfriend. Fingers crossed. Like many people that navigate the dating scene for any length of time, while I was a singleton, which wasn't that long ago, I had tons of disastrous dates. Guys that took an instant dislike to me simply because I didn't look like Angelina Jolie. We've all had guys who can't keep their hands to themselves. And also guys who like to pretend to be someone they're not. Number one, desperation. There's nothing more off-putting on a date when you turn up and someone is trying so, so hard to impress you that they just come across as desperate. Desperation is such an off-putter, but I've got to be honest, I've been single for a little while and sometimes I feel like I may be getting a bit desperate. What do I do to avoid that, Sharon? So when you go on your date, just remember the other person's probably just as nervous and as desperate as you are. So try to be confident, maybe revise a little bit in advance, think of some questions, some interesting questions that you can ask the other person about, you know, giving more insight into their personality or their interests. So if you appear interested, you'll come across as less desperate. That's really good advice. And also, the one thing that is really important to remember with all of these dates is that if it doesn't go very well, there are plenty more fish in the sea. If you want to date a haddock. Number two, overshare. Well, Sharon, have I got a story to tell you about tell overshare? I've been on 26 dates this week. I know, <laughs> hold your horses, sit down, this is true. 24 of them, though, were speed dating. Ah. I'd never done speed dating before, and I found that it was a little bit of an overshare for a particular Italian gentleman, hello if you're watching, let's call you Mario, to spend your four minutes with me talking about his ex. Now, his ex was a Catholic, he loved her to pieces, but he wasn't able to touch her in the right way because her religion dictated that he couldn't. This is far too much information to be learning about someone that I've known for all of four minutes. Yeah, you especially don't want to be talking about your exes when you go on a first date. Good advice. So save it for third, fourth date, wait until you're settled with someone before you start referring to your past relationships. Or maybe just don't tell someone at all, start afresh, brand new slate. The past is the past, we're all about the present and the future. Number three is lust. Unwanted physical contact. If you're on a first date, might be a good idea just to wait. Exactly, and guys, I'm really sorry to pinpoint you with this one, but when you're talking to somebody online, women do not want to see things that they shouldn't be seeing until you get to the bedroom. Please don't send those pictures, please. Number four on the list is arrogance. Confidence is a really important trait, but you can't ever think about yourself as being better than someone else. Now I had a date like that where uh, I turned up and the guy took an instant dislike to me as per usual. And um, he what? worked in well, he worked in IT, and um, he thought he was really good looking and you know something special. And when I quizzed him about what he wanted to do if he didn't work in IT, he said he wanted to be either a writer or in a band. So I quizzed him a little bit more. And I said, well, you know, what instrument do you play? And he said, oh, I don't play an instrument. Have you been a band then? Oh, no, well, exactly. And I said, well, what have you written? And he said, oh, I haven't written anything. So I said, you know what, I've written two books. So there. Mm -hmm. He deserved that. Mm -hmm. Learn from that. Number five, emasculation. It's one for the ladies here. So I've been told that men in general like to feel like they're the protectors, they're the rescuers, they're the ones who are needed and dependable. So don't take that away from them by trying to act like one of them. 
So ask him for his help with something. Make the guy feel valued, make him feel needed, make him feel interesting. But then on the flip side, you don't want to make yourself out to be dumb. You don't want to dumb yourself down. Number six, rudeness. Rudeness on a date is an absolute no-no. Manners cost absolutely nothing. What do you think? I completely agree with you. I was on a date very recently and the gentleman, after an hour and a half, told me to my face that he didn't find me attractive. Oh my god. It's a massive no-no. You know, there are ways of dealing with those sort of things where you can still be polite and not make the other person feel terrible about yeah, themselves. just text them in the morning, say thanks a lot for the date, it was really nice to meet you, but the, I didn't feel that there was any chemistry, something like that. You don't need to go into detail, you don't need to tell them, sorry, I'm not attracted to you. He didn't say sorry, he just looked at me in the eye, I do not fancy you. <laughs> So no, we've, no. All, we've all been there. Anyway, just think, when you have kids yourself, think how they will be treated when they go dating. Manners cost nothing. And finally, it's number seven, lying. So about two years ago, my life was only turned upside down by a guy that I was in a relationship with. And uh, it turns out that nothing that he told me was true. He turned out to be married in the end. Yeah, it was a really difficult time that you handled with complete and utter grace and poise, but it should never happen to anyone. Her no. life became like an episode of EastEnders. It was. It was pretty unpleasant for a while. They even had to hire a private investigator to get to the bottom of things. That's how desperate it got. Yeah, it was a terrible time, but it just goes to show that the truth costs nothing. Much the same as everything we've listed here today, it's not hard to be polite to people, to be honest to people, and lying's not going to get you anywhere, you're always going to get found out. But, do beware of people not being themselves. Beware of people on their profiles, on their dating profiles, on Tinder, wherever it is you look for dates. Just beware that people aren't always what they say they are, just bear that in mind. So those were the seven deadly sins of dating. Hopefully there's been some useful tips for you. Yeah, and continue watching because we're going to follow Fliss's dating life as it happens. So please subscribe and hope you enjoyed watching. Subscribe!